Are we on? Good, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. Welcome to our pre-match press conference for our match against Marine on Sunday, as always. Uh, we'll do a separate with the written media after this, which is embargoed until 10.30 during the broadcast bit. We ask uh, no social media posting um, or any streaming of the press conference at all. Um, as always, we will start with Sky. So, Paul Gilmore, I will come to you first. Please raise your hand if you do have a question. We'll try to get to as many of you as possible. Paul. Paul Gilmore. Hi, Jose. Can you hear me? Hello. I yep. can. Hi, Good Jose. A, a potentially uh, a, another fixture postponement next week with, with the game against Aston Villa. What's the solution? I thought we were going to speak about the FA Cup and Marin. You asking me a very difficult question. A very difficult question because what I know, I know from you. So you know more than me. What I know, I know from media. And I'm not in conditions to to tell you anything that you don't know. What can I add? Um, I believe that is a completely impossible situation uh, for a club to have three matches postponed, especially if that club plays in Europe. If it is a club that doesn't play in Europe, and has three matches postponed. Of course, uh, there are always the um, UEFA fixtures, which are for the Champions League teams, uh, six fixtures, six, eight. Um, and in the Europa League cases are uh, even more. Uh, so for a Europa League team, to have three matches postponed is impossible. Completely impossible. That's the only thing that I can that I can say. If the Villa game is postponed, do you think Tottenham could play Fulham next week with maybe the Fulham Chelsea game on Friday rearranged? Would that would that be a, a good solution? I don't know, and it's not for me to to find solutions. Uh I'm not going to lie to you. I, I've been doing that kind of hypothetical exercise with my staff, but just uh, hypothetically. And of course, we have no influence, and we don't want to have uh, influence. The only thing that we that we can say is uh, that what we did in in the beginning of the season is impossible to repeat and we refuse to repeat uh, because then we have to defend our players we have to defend the integrity of uh, of our competitions and we would never accept to play uh, seven matches in in three weeks like we did uh, before uh, because of the moment of the season one thing is beginning another thing is mid-season and also because of uh, the difficulty of uh, and the demanding of the matches because one thing is to play with all the risk but we did the Europa League playoffs another thing is to play Europa League uh, knockout where uh, all the best teams are there so we cannot put we cannot be put in in an impossible uh, situation. So I repeat, to have three matches um, uh, postponed is uh, impossible. It's not for us to find uh, to find the decisions. I think it's the moment for the Premier League to show to show leadership and um, to make decisions. Uh, decisions where, of course, a club like us. Uh, that is uh, trying everything every day to be ready to to play to follow the the rules that 
we were uh, we had in our hands since the beginning of the competition we cannot be punished and um, if we don't play against uh, against Aston Villa we will have three matches uh, postponed and that is impossible uh, because after the season we have the Euros and of course the Euros are not going to be moved. Paul apologies I'm gonna have to I'm if you can have a couple more questions, that's fine. But I'm conscious there's a lot of people that want questions today, so I would have to move you on after that, OK? Yeah, sorry, of course. Last couple. Um, Jose, I know it's obviously a, a tough time for people at the moment in society, but Thomas Frank has tested positive for coronavirus after your game on Tuesday. Will you or any of your players have to self-isolate off the back of that? And is it when it's so close to home, is it just a reminder that the protocols are, are so important as well? Yeah, the protocols are important, but... Uh... In um, the test before the match, uh, Thomas was uh, negative, and everybody in his in his club, in in our club, of course, involved in the game, everybody was uh, was negative. So that little contact uh, could be avoided, maybe yes, but uh, we all felt was safe uh, because everybody was uh, was negative uh, after that uh, thomas tested um, a positive uh, all of us uh, negative uh, we got all the negative tests between players and um, and coaching staff everybody negative so we just wish him the best recovery and uh, to be back soon to to his team and at the same time wish uh, good luck to his coaching staff that now has to be in charge. And a final question just on Marine. On Saturday your team will be changing in a bar. You'll be facing the, the striker who combines playing football with being a teacher. What are you expecting from the day and, and also what do you make of Liverpool helping <laughs> helping Marine with their analysis for the game? Uh, Liverpool helping uh, Marine I think is uh, is normal uh, you know they are neighbors uh, i'm pretty sure that emotional connections between them and uh, if they gave him analysis from from us or if they gave him access to to certain kind of uh, footage that uh, they would not have i feel it absolutely absolutely normal what we can expect uh, first of all, we need to to see the pitch. Uh, is important for the the safety of the players that the pitch is okay. Um, I believe they are trying to do everything to have the pitch the best possible. And then, is a club, is a team, is a group of uh, of boys playing the game of uh, of their careers. So what can we do a part of respect them and win the match? Nothing. Uh, I always believe that uh, respect these teams is to beat them. Uh, to show respect to them is to beat them. To show respect to them is to play with a good team, with a team with responsibility, with a team with motivation with a team that goes there and wins the game. That is to show respect. Uh, that is um, the cup mentality of the big teams. If we go there and uh, we lose, of course, would be amazing for them, but I think would be a lack of respect from us to them. We are preparing the game normally. We train today looking at that game uh, we had tactical meeting looking at that team and we are going there of course to to win the match okay if we do one question each from now on and a follow-up if necessary we'll start with george cummins george thanks simon um hello jose um have you worked out how many games i think you would have to play 38 games if you made the final of the europa league and the fa cup i mean do you, are you going to have to sacrifice the FA Cup? If because I, I don't, I don't know what the what is. How can you do it? What can you do? Yeah, but how? Why should we sacrifice anything? That's not uh, that. 
that's not the objective of the competition. That's not the objective of, uh, of football. Uh, I think nobody should uh, should be pushed to sacrifice anything. We had that in the beginning of the season, and people was asking us if we are going to sacrifice anything, and why should we sacrifice? We didn't sacrifice anything. But the reality is that we played seven matches in that short period of time. We took lots of risks uh, by playing Chelsea with the team that we did. We took risks by playing uh, playoffs uh, that would give us Europa League, yes or no, with that accumulation of matches. And we felt it. We felt it. We felt it in our, in our body, in our brain. We felt that. Um, we don't want to throw away any competitions, um, but we don't want to be punished without doing anything to be uh, to be punished. Um, and that's it. I keep <clears throat> saying the same. For a team that is playing Europe, three matches postponed, if that's the case, is impossible. Impossible. There is no way of playing these three matches until the end of uh, the season if you have three matches postponed. Unless we lose FA Cup, we lose Europa League early, and then you find you find spaces. But three matches in hand, one thing is for a club that doesn't play Europe, and another thing is for a club that plays Europe. And, and Villa have had 10 players test positive today. I mean, surely your game can't be played on Wednesday. 10 first team players. It's not for me to answer. Um, I have uh, uh, friends at Villa, but I don't want to make it a distinction between my friends and the other professionals that in the end are colleagues of the same industry. So I just hope uh, that is not just uh, John and Christian that uh, are safe. I hope everybody is fine. And if they are positive, I hope that everything goes well and fast for them. A part of that, I cannot say anything. The only thing that I can say is that from the beginning of the competition, that uh, we knew that possibly we would have to play a game or more with 14 players available from all the players available, including the academy players, we knew that by the rule that could happen to that could happen to us. Um, we had positive cases, we cannot deny. Players, coaches, other stuff. We also had problems, um, but I cannot say much more than that. I can only say that for us will be will be impossible to play to play with three matches uh, postponed. Okay, we've got to change the talk sport. Jose, Spurs as a club and as a fan base have been supporting the Marine Community Scheme ahead of this match. How pleasing has it been to see the football community come together in what has been a, a really difficult time for a number of clubs and for a lot of people in the country? Uh, it's a pity. It's a pity for them. I told that in the playoffs in Europe, when we were going to Macedonia, when we were going to Bulgaria to play these matches um, without fans, it's not just economically, but it's also emotionally uh, very, very sad. Uh, we, we could imagine the enthusiasm in, in Macedonia to have a Tottenham, Tottenham there. And now we go to Marine, historical, historical match. And of course, we feel very sorry that the stadium is is empty and they cannot enjoy, celebrate the day the way they would love. If people can help in different ways, I, I, I read uh, a few things, you know, Carragher supporting in one way, then uh, people then buying these virtual uh, tickets. It's nice. It's not what they would love, but it's nice. But I repeat, uh, I focus on the sports side of it and the way to respect them and the way to make it beautiful for them 
is to go there with a, with a good team and to go there and win the match. And if there are any issues with the pitch at all, would that have any effect on selection? Would there be players that you'd look to not risk considering the number of games you've got coming up? No, you know, we... We don't know the pitch really. What we know is from some, some footage and some images. Of course, it's, uh, it's not as wide as we're used to. It's not as long as we used to. Probably the quality will be not uh, the same too. But that's the cup. And hopefully has uh, positive conditions for football to be played without any risk to the any risk to the players because uh, in the end we want to play we want to play with a good team and hopefully they they give us uh, these conditions I, I i honestly believe that they want to play against a tottenham a tottenham first team i believe that's what they want i don't think they would be happy if tottenham goes there with uh, with a team that is not uh, a strong Tottenham side, so we want to give them that that respect by going there with with a team that is a very good team. Okay, we're going to go to Dan Salisbury Jones now. Dan, just one uh, question each now, please. Yeah, sure. Uh, hi, Jose. Um, this week uh, at ITV News, we've gone out on a bin round with James Barrigan, one of the um, the players at Marine. Um, he's a bin man, and and he said that you know this is a this is going to be a dream to play your side this weekend. What what would be your message to him um, and to everybody else at Marine that, that are so excited about it? Look, the message is basically what I told. I I don't think they want to play against Tottenham under 23. Uh, I think they want to play against the Tottenham side with the guys that they are used to to watch, they are used to to admire, they are used to follow. And we want to give them, we want to give them that. Um, myself and my my staff, the respect is the way we are preparing the game. Uh, the same way we are trying to know uh, their striker, their centre back, their goalkeeper, their tactical organisation is exactly the same way we try to do that with um, with other opponents, of course, of a different uh, of a different um, level. Um, and basically is that uh, I think the same way they feel happy to play against us I want my guys I feel that I feel very happy to play against them I feel very happy that he's in Crosby and not at home I feel very happy to to play them and um, I understand the dream I understand the dream uh, it's up to us to bring them to reality to bring them back to reality. But I clearly understand the dream. Nobody puts a foot in a football pitch uh, knowing or feeling that we are going to lose. So I believe that in this moment, they feel they are going to win. And it's up to us to bring them back to, to reality. Uh, we are top professionals. We are a different level. We are going to win. It's up to us to make them understand that as soon as possible, but in this moment they have the dream. Okay, take two more. One from Jonathan Ville and one from Alistair Gold. They're at the top of my list. So we'll start with John. Hi, Jose. Um, Hi, Jonathan. Is Gareth Bale going to be fit on, on Sunday? And if not, how long or how far away is he from fitness? He trained today, first time uh, with us. Uh, so tomorrow, second time. And uh, Tomorrow, after training, we will make a, a decision. What I can say, uh, and is also a way to show you um, the way we are looking, the respect we are looking to this fixture, is that Garrett told me that uh, he would like to go, he would like to play. So if tomorrow the feelings are positive, uh, Garrett will come. Okay, last question from Ellie Gold, and then we'll move on to the written media. Ellie. Hey there, Jose. 
Um, just want to ask you about another two players that obviously been out, um, Giovanni Lo Celso and Eric Lamella, whether they'll be back in contention at all or not. And also, I know you said about not having under-23 players, but could we see the likes of Harvey White, who uh, was on the bench on Tuesday night, and Jack Clark involved in the squad in any way? Yeah, Harvey, um, Harvey and Jack, they, they are under-23s. They play under-23s when we feel that they should go there and take minutes but they are uh, professionals. They belong to the first team squad. They train with the first team squad since they won in preseason. They played in uh, in Europa League. So let's look at them as first team players. And of course, they will be involved in in the game, but they are involved so many times. So is is nothing uh, is nothing new with um, a starting eleven plus. Uh, nine on the bench, we are speaking about 20 players. I, I can tell you, out in these 20 players, we are going to take only one uh, under-18 player. So we take one under-18 player that will be on uh, on the bench, like we had also that in, in, in other matches. We had that in many other matches. But one kid will be on the bench. So out of 20, only one will be a kid. A part of that, we have 19 players from the first team squad. Okay, thanks, Ali. That will conclude the broadcast part of the press conference. We'll now move on to the written part, which is embargo till 10.30 tonight.